Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at ISO drawing tools. This is a little pack I put together and uploaded to Gumroad. You can download this for free. Just head over to Gumroad. There'll be a link in the description. And basically, isometric drawings is something that a lot of engineers use to create objects on paper. Okay, so when we take a look at this, it's going to be a couple grid files, and then there's going to be a blender scene. And what this allows you to do is draw out an image onto a... Uh, grid here and then be able to take it into blender and actually 3d model off of that image so it sounds pretty simple but let's go ahead and get started and take a look at it you'll see how this works out so when you load this up i have two different versions i have a blender grid and an iso grid they're pretty much the same thing just a little bit of change in the grid pattern there at the very center this is actually representing the uh, blender scenes world origin point so just keep that in mind at the very bottom right here we got a little extra info so you can see the size of a meter and these little squares are 0.1 meters. This is also representing the 3D world space that you're looking at inside of Blender as well. So keep that in mind. All right. The other grid is going to be more similar to isometric drawing paper, like graph paper. And so it has vertical lines to go along with it. Okay. It's a little bit more disorienting if you're not used to drawing in this manner, but it does help to have those vertical lines. Okay. But you can certainly use this one and just remember to work up and down for the Z axis. Okay. Now you can create a layer on top. I've included a Photoshop brush here called the Precision Pen. It's just a hard round brush, but it works really well for what we're about to do. There's also an eraser that helps you erase lines. So you can use this with um, raster graphics like we're doing here in Photoshop, but you can also take this grid over to something else such as Illustrator or Affinity Designer, and you can also use vectors to do this kind of stuff. So just keep that in mind. And um, But we're going to be doing it destructively with raster. So. Uh, create a new layer and if we click right here at the center and hold shift and click somewhere else we can actually start creating these lines like so all right in a uh, isometric drawing in general is kind of like an orthographic view right so we can go ahead and draw out these little sections like this and these are going to be one meter each we can go ahead and create a 3d shape in a 2D view, not any problems. Now you're gonna to have to line things up according to the grid, and you're gonna to want to take into consideration on how you create other things like cylinders, for example. You might want to use some basic drawing principles like creating a cross across it. Uh, remembering you have to touch each one of these sides in the middle here, and then somewhere around midway there, you can start to uh, draw the shape of cylinders relatively accurately. Just freehand in it or you could use like shapes and stuff like that as well to kind of conform and, and transform them into what needs to be made right uh, keep in mind another thing you can do is draw a straight on flat um, orthographic view of something so you can do maybe like floor plans or paneling on a spaceship or whatever the case may be and just draw it out however you see fit something like so i'm going to use the lasso tool press l select it I hit V to use the move tool and I can grab it and move it. So I can position it somewhere like so. But I can hit Control T, right click, and um, we're going to use skew. So I can line this up to the grid like this just by skewing it around. Go back into scale and you're going to need to hold shift and scale so that it stays um, in the appropriate shape here. And so you can place those 2D drawings onto your, your 3D object here, right? Um, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, you can certainly do a lot of other cool things. So let's say we're working on a shape and on the back side of this shape, we could pretend we're looking through a three-dimensional object and just looking at wireframes if we want. And so we can cut out a back section here and maybe cut out like a front section here. Okay. And so let's say this one uh, comes out and push it out. Uh, 0.1 meters here. Try to keep it on a grid as best as possible. Accuracy is pretty important because if you were to try to 3D model this, the more accurate, the better. You don't want to create like paradoxes and, and just weird things like that happening. Okay. Go through real quick. But you can draw your three-dimensional shape like so. 
Okay, so we, we know what we're looking at now, but here's where the fun begins. If I was to select everything, press Control A, I could do a transform and rotate everything 180 degrees. So right now we're looking at it from like the left front uh, quarter view, right? If we rotate it 180 degrees, we can now imagine that we're looking at this from the uh, right rear bottom view. All right, so there's little cool things like that, little perspective tricks, I guess. And uh, we can see it's kind of inverted now. So we could actually more or less draw a three-dimensional object and see all sides of it if we wanted to, as long as we just uh, kind of do that little rotation trick there. So a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we're going to keep this video kind of simple. We're not going to get too crazy into the drawings itself. But if we were to, say, I cut a section here at the top. Oop, went off the grid there. Just do this number. I'm going to push up a little section here. Be a little disorienting at first if you're new to this idea, but it's a lot of fun once you get into it. You don't have to do it all the way through either, so you don't have to do the back side if you don't want to. Um, but I'm going to use this as an example of how you can get lost working on an object in a 3D space anyway. So uh, when you're done doing your drawing, you can just save it out as like a PNG file or something else. And we'll go ahead and put this one on the desktop. We'll call it um, Drawing, just like so. And now we can head over to Blender. And so this comes with a Blender scene. And when you load that Blender scene up, there's going to be a camera inside of it. And that's it. Uh, this reference camera, you can't select in the 3D viewport. You have to click on it up here. And that's just so you don't accidentally move it around. And you can go to the Camera Properties tab. And you should see here Background Images. You can add image, right? Um, or just click open and we'll go find that drawing we did so now we can click on drawing and load it up right here in the blender now keep in mind you might want to play with a couple settings here so something like depth you can have it show up behind the 3d objects or in front of them and you can also adjust the opacity as you see fit um, if I was to create a cube right now so I press shift a create cube you'll see that we can't see anything there um, so we may want to click on the camera and adjust so that it's in front, perhaps. Uh, personally, I like to use X-ray mode. So right here, just hit Alt-Z, turn that on. Okay, and I'm going to go in here and start modifying this. I'm going to go straight into edit mode, start scaling it down. And we'll do a whole control, and it'll snap like so. Okay. And so I can get this quickly onto this one meter section. Not a big issue. So it's more or less modeled at this point. Okay. So if I want to press Shift-A, I can create... Um, another cube and I can go into edit mode and scale it down and move it to say like this section here and it's a little bit different how you work with these when you're looking at it through the camera but you can line it up like this this is a new object right and not a big deal if we were to orbit out so we just take a look at it we'll see that it's not placed where it should be so it's important to remember that if you're going to build multiple objects um, near each other. You need to have them somewhat intersecting each other so you can kind of find where they are in relation to each other because you're working without like a frame of reference. So things just kind of pop into existence in the 3D space and uh, you have to manually align these up at some point. You can always get back to the camera by hitting the tilde key, which is the top left of the keyboard, a little squiggly line. And then you could do a uh, view camera and you can get right back into that view super fast. We can see it looks correct here, but it's not. And so what I would probably do is just take note of when I'm drawing that I'm making sure if something's touching the other object, like some kind of primary shape, um, I want to make sure that I line it up like so in uh, 3D view as well. So if I take this object and just bring it up here like so, turn X-ray off for a second with Alt-Z, I know this one is pretty much more or less sitting on top of this cube. So I can come in, I can see now it's sitting on top of it. I know it's going to be misaligned and I can certainly uh, realign it. Okay, so now this is going to be accurate. Right? So when we orbit out, no problems. Right? And we can certainly model other things in here as well. So if I was to go back into edit mode, things like these little cuts here are absolutely no problem. Go ahead and do that just by adding a couple loop cuts by pressing Control R and doing loop cut and slide. And then on this one, I'm going to do an extrude. Um, let's see if I can get it to work. 
Alt E extrude manifold. Okay, so I can just quickly push that one in like that. And that works out really well. On the back side here, remember I drew out that little section for the, the back there. And fortunately, lines up with this cut we made here in the front. So I could just extrude it out. And I don't try to use the normal extrusion. So whenever you press E, it automatically starts an extrusion and a move. That's going to be the, uh, the blue line represents a normal. So a lot of times it's more important to just uh, define an axis. So I'll press Y in this case and just uh, push it out like so. That way I make sure it's going to line up appropriately and properly. So now we have that done. And we can continue working on this model however we see fit. It's going to be a little bit more complicated when you start working with cylinders. Just keep that in mind. They're not as simple and as straightforward. Uh, this one isn't too bad because we can tell where it's sitting on the surface of this main object. So it'll be real easy to model that out if we needed to. Um, however, when you start working with like pipes that come out in space, uh, it can be a little bit more challenging. Just keep that in mind. It's going to take a little bit of practice on your end to uh, kind of fill all this out and get it to work just as you see fit. But nonetheless, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, and it's, uh, it's really quite easy and simple to do once you get the hang of it. So this is something that you can utilize and take advantage of, so you don't necessarily need to um, always work in 3D to do your blockouts. You can start with 2D and then kind of work those objects out here in the 3D view later on. Just kind of a cool little thing you can do, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will check you out in the next one, all right? So take care.